This is Twit. Now, this one is interesting. Ransomware seems to be a consistent topic we talk about each and every week. Now, remember the city of Baltimore being held ransom? Well, Baltimore refused to pay a $76,000 worth of Bitcoin despite facing estimated ransomware costs of more than $18 million, of which $8 million was lost or deferred revenue. Now, Baltimore lacked cyber insurance to cover those costs. And in the case, there was also no guarantees that their data wasn't leaked or stolen from the network as well. Well... A new ransomware attack has happened, and the city of Riviera Beach, Florida, is facing similar challenges. Now, this time, ransomware operators are actually demanding $600,000 to regain access to the city's data. Now, the ransom was an order of magnitude larger than that of Baltimore's attack. Now, against the advice of the FBI, the Riviera Beach City Council voted to actually pay the ransomware more than $300,000 of actually was covered by the city's insurance policy. Now, they are smaller than Baltimore with an IT department of only 10 people. And according to their uh, latest recent budget, that they only have an annual budget of $2.5 million to support the total city government of 550 employees. Now, Baltimore has 50 IT staffers supporting 13,000 employees. It's not a surprise that Riviera Beach's leadership decided to pay, given that the full incident response, dis- actually given that the full incident response would have cost them two to three times what they agreed to pay the ransomware. Now, half the price tag was actually covered by insurance. But if you think about it, this leads into a little bit of a hint on the city's response that actually paying the ransomware means that it indicates that maybe they just didn't have effective uh, uh, uh we disaster recovery plans. Sorry, I was reaching for that word. Now to shift a bit, they were these types of ransomwares in the past were actually opportunistic. Now there's actually been a shift on how ransomware attacks are being conducted. Now they started originally they started out by be, being more opportunistic, where they kind of just blasted a uh, ransomware campaign over the web, and they used uh, Tor-based ransomware panels to actually communicate. To victims and prove that they had keys uh, of their un- of their uh, unlock files, uh, and in fact, they actually were allowed to do try before you lie decryption a few files on just to be proof of that they have access. And the only downfall to that was that they weren't making much money. Um, they were they really had uh, normally two to three hundred dollars in Bitcoin only, and only really ten percent of maybe a hundred thousand people were infected would actually pay. Now this type of thing where uh, they were using ransomware services as tools where they actually had uh, higher English speakers to actually like customer support people and walk them through the process. Uh, but this wasn't, there wasn't really a good return on investment here. Now uh, there's actually been a shift, um, more targeted attacks. Now these attacks are being more focused at specific organizations that potentially have a lot of sensitive data, but don't actually have the money to pay and potentially don't have assurances or disaster recovery to actually support this. Now, some targeted demands have paid, actually aimed for payouts as large as $6 million, and they often don't have deadlines associated with them, but the ransom demands are priced to make the companies kind of pay up because they don't want to lose their data um, and they don't want to have to go through the whole process of starting over. Now, communication is now done through email. It's no longer done through these peer-to-peer networks or other forums. Um, and it's, it's actually a lot easier for them to get through this process. Now, let's talk a little bit about disaster recovery. Baltimore's mayors claim that city backups were there in their case, but they didn't have concrete disaster recovery plans. Now, Baltimore's CIO who actually came from a sales background, he really didn't have too much experience in IT operations, has been working for in some form of disaster recovery plan, but it was really mainly dealing with power outages and other, and not data loss. Now, despite these IT security managers, they the city did not have insurance to cover this. So this brings me to my first question. I want to kind of throw this over to Chibert first. Uh, now, plans with like full incremental backups, ready to load, good patch management, other security practices, these ransomware attacks would kind of really mean nothing. It would just be kind of an annoyance. Chibert, we talked about this before, but why aren't organizations making this as part of their plan as they expose themselves to the internet? What's going on here? Um, I think it's show me the money. I I've, can't tell you... Um, Every single IT organization I have ever worked with, have ever talked to, has all had one thing in common. They don't have enough money. Um, 
either they got to spend the money on talent to especially now that you know with all the cybersecurity worries which means something has to give you know maybe it's okay well those backups are really great but maybe we can cut back on them just a little bit because it's costing us a lot of money or gee that cybersecurity specialist is great can't we just train in house I'm at, I'm actually going to throw out that the name of this show should be Pay Me Now or Pay Me Later. Uh, and to the city council people and aldermen and people all over the world, I say it's Pay Me Now or Pay Me Later. Either you start investing in this. If you're going to put that many eggs in that in this small little basket called IT – then you need to also invest in it. You don't go and set up a bank and use a plywood door for your vault. You invest in a good vault door. I equate cybersecurity specialists and incremental backups, often incremental backups. And I even like going into using write once, read many, so you, you can only burn it once so that backups cannot be changed if you mount them. Uh, I really, really, really miss large-scale, large-capacity worm drives. They have almost completely disappeared from the market. But those are actually really, really good um, backup media uh, for cybersecurity purposes because once you commit to glass, it can't be changed which means if someone mounts it and has already taken over a machine, they can't change that backup. So I think that's something we might want to really consider, that city councilmen, when you start looking at your budget, if you're going to be depending upon your IT group to help you make money on something or keep track of money or anything like that, you really and truly need to also invest in making sure you have a nice, strong vault door. Absolutely. Now you point. You have a good point here. Now there, it just goes to show you there's a lot of organizations out there, uh, many government organizations and businesses that are just not prepared for this. Now, in fact, over the past few years, ransomware has really exploded here. Now, data from the FBI actually shows that another organization is hit by ransomware every 14 seconds on average. Curtis, I want to throw this to you. Why why aren't organizations being prepared? What's what's going on here? Well, what we're seeing in some of the organizations being hit is that really they're too small. Uh, for example, uh, in the last couple of weeks, there have been two more Florida towns hit by either ransomware or a cybersecurity event, as they've called it. Uh, one is Lake City, a small town up in North Florida. The other is Biscayne, um, um, Key Biscayne, which is uh, on a little island across uh, Biscayne Bay from uh, from Miami. In the case of Biscayne Bay, they, it's about 13,000 people in the town, or Key Biscayne, it's about 13,000 people. Lake City is about the same size. So really you're talking about an organization, a government organization, that's probably got somewhere between one and three IT people. In the case of uh, Lake City, it was a ransomware attack. They did decide to pay the ransom because they have cyber insurance. And so they said it took cost them about $10,000 out of pocket. The rest of it came from the insurance company. And so what I think we're seeing is the attackers being much more selective about the the cities that they're going after. They, they're not just randomly picking these these government organizations they're going after government organizations where either they know because of the, the government's size that they probably don't have a, a large IT group or they have some sort of insider knowledge about deficiencies in the IT operation. So when you ask why aren't they prepared, there's no good answer for that. But in many cases, you do have these individuals who are doing the best they, they know how to do but they've just got too much of the IT operation to try to keep track of. And as we all know, the the squeaky he uh, wheel is going to get that grease and users facing slowdowns, 
demands for, for new capabilities, those tend to be much higher noise factors than security right up to that tragic moment when they're not. Right. Now, unfortunately, trends are showing there's really no slowing this down. In fact, there's a new trend showing that, showing that actually targeted ransomwares are seeking even bigger payouts even more over time and are being more sophisticated or going against more sophisticated organizations. Now, Bam, what do we do? What do we do to stop the bleeding here? Um, it's not just having a disaster recovery plan. It's actually testing that plan and um, knowing uh, I think a lot of these organizations, they don't really have a good handle on on what their their cost of data loss looks like, or if they even if they do, it's it's astronomical, right? So when de developing a disaster recovery plan, start to start to spell out things like time to recover, right? Because uh, ransom, you know, attacks for ransom are not a new thing, right? Ransomware is the you know due to you know. The ways that we can use malware is, is a whole new flavor, but things like DDoS attacks for ransom are have been around forever. But we've actually, you know, taken some of the the wind out of those sails by providing such you know robust uh, DDoS mitigation services that not only can can help me mitigate DDoS, but but can actually you know do it in such a fast fashion that. Um, you know that you know paying for paying for someone not to DDoS you is not really even uh, an, an, uh, a concern. So, I think that the number one thing, right? If you have a DDoS, you have a disaster recovery plan, you got backups in place. You know that's one thing, but you've got to also know like how long does it take me to recover that data? How long does it take me to go from all right, my my stuff's been encrypted against my will. And how long does it take me to restore that data and get back up and running again? Because that's where the cost is, and that's that's how they know, you know, to target you because they know you can't recover quickly. So that's that's what I would, uh, you know, counsel every enterprise out there is really know, you know, if this bit of data gets encrypted and you need need it back, um, it's not enough to know you have a backup of it. Know how long it takes you to recover. And that's where you can start to, you know, make the case for, you know, as as my f good friend Brian said, you know, pay me now or pay me later. If you want them, if you want your your executive team to pay you now to prevent this nightmare from occurring and putting you on the front page, be able to say, all right, right now what we're paying is giving us a time to recover of three days. In which time, you know. The lights go out in the city. We can. Ne we're never going to get back on our feet again. Or the time to recover. If we pay X amount more, the time to recover drops to three hours, and then it becomes uh, a, 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 a basically a wash. And you can actually really recover. Your backups are actually now meaningful. So that's really understand. Uh, you know your time to recover and develop plans that that measure the value of that time. 